What's up, traders? I want to talk about some current events right now with this Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack and why I think that Monero was probably the cryptocurrency used by the hackers. And the reason I think that, I'm going to use an anecdote for, but let's take a look at the uh, news article. So this came out today where they finally admitted that they paid the ransomware. Originally, the company said, oh, we're not going to give in to the demands of the hackers. Well, I know personally from dealing with ransomware for other people, not myself, thankfully, that there's basically two ways that you get your computer back from a ransomware attack. Number one, you restore from backups. Number two, you pay the hackers. And there's a final one, number three, but that involves spending probably the next couple thousand years trying to crack the encryption. It's that strong. You're not going to get it back. And so I just remember from working in IT, I know what these guys were going through. They were probably sitting there looking for their backups, trying to find them, could not, and ended up having to pay. Somebody's probably going to get fired. But what the news is reporting is that they paid nearly $5 million in an untraceable cryptocurrency. Now, a lot of people, when they hear this, they think, oh, they paid off in Bitcoin. But I don't think it was Bitcoin. And the reason is because I've actually dealt with this before many years ago. So several years ago, I got contacted by a friend who his friend, his boss, had gotten ransomware on his wife's computer. It's a very, very sad story. The reason is because on his wife's computer, her laptop, she had pictures of their one and only child who had died of childhood cancer. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, she was eight years old. And that was the only pictures that she had. And I helped him. I consulted with him going through the process because back in 2014, when this happened, uh, my friend did not know much about it. So that's why he came to me and I helped him. I walked him through the process and I hated it. I didn't want to do it, but I told him flat out, there's no way you're going to get it back. And so I can actually go back through, I saved these records, the transactions, as well as all the addresses this was back in 2014 in July, and the address that uh, was paid into uh, this scam totaled about 15 Bitcoin, which you know now in today's terms is three quarters of a million dollars. At the time, though, that was around about 10 grand that they made. Bitcoin was worth a lot less. But you can actually go through and see where all that money went into a larger pool of 653 Bitcoin. The last transactions there were in. Um, Let's see, September of that year. And then it went through another uh, series of transactions. This address had 652,000 Bitcoin. But this looks more like a Tumblr. And a Tumblr is what they use to try to anonymize the cryptocurrency. And these stopped working about 2017. So a lot of efforts that these hackers went through to try to anonymize, going through different addresses to uh, basically launder the Bitcoin that they got from this hack. And I don't know where it is now. I'm not going to go through those details, but someone, if they were so inclined, could trace every single Bitcoin that was touched by this hacker and potentially catch them if they made a mistake somewhere down the line, transferring it to, let's say, an exchange to get the money out. So this is why I don't think Bitcoin was used in this hack. I think they use Monero. And the first piece of evidence is uh, brought to us by this uh, Sentinel One, who's a obviously an information security company. Um, they talk about this ransomware uh, back in November was when they started trying, the hackers that made it try to sell it, this dark side, uh, which is a piece of software. Uh, and some of the features uh, it talks about were the ways that you can uh, interact with it, that you can create hacker websites for it. This is when they're trying to sell the software to other people that are going to use it. And the two things it notes here is automatic acceptance of Bitcoin and Monero. And so I believe that Monero is going to be the hacker's choice in this case. Bitcoin is, of course, more widely 
uh, accepted and available, but Monero has some unique opportunities uh, for hackers or anyone for that matter over Bitcoin. So here's just a little brief comparison. Monero came out in 2014. Uh, I don't know if it still has the same seven developers working on it. Uh, it has a inflating supply, unlike Bitcoin, which is limited. Still does the same proof of work. But the key thing is the privacy. Monero is effectively untraceable in many different ways, and it's not trackable. Whereas Bitcoin, as we looked in my example, I can still go back and I can look and see where all that Bitcoin has gone, who it's gone to, not names, but I can track the addresses. You can't do that in Monero. They have explicitly designed Monero to be untraceable. Going through a few of these uh, use cases for Monero here, uh, basically in this list right here, one, two, and three, all basically says that you can't see how much Monero is in a person's account. This is really advantageous uh, for a lot of reasons. You know, you, maybe you don't want people to know which is in your account. If you're dealing with someone, you don't want to lend to know how much is in your account because maybe they'll negotiate a higher price with you. You also don't want people tracking your sending habits. You don't want people knowing what transactions you've done. That's what Monero protects you against. And then also it segregates all of your transactions from everyone else's. In other words, a hacker could have used Monero and this uh, this ransomware attack and then bought some socks or cupcakes from you with that illicit gains. And if the government or a law enforcement agency starts coming after that, well, if you had done Bitcoin, then they could potentially seize your Bitcoin because they say, oh, well, that came from an illicit activity. So you need to hand that over to us because we can prove that you, that now belongs to you. You can't do that with Monero. And I actually had the opportunity to sit down and talk to a developer a few years ago, and they're even as granular as to try to keep the metadata. In other words, that a transaction even happened, the time it happened, the amount that it happened. They want everything to be completely anonymous. And this is a really good use case. And so I'm going to bring this back to a question. I'm not going to name names or call people out here about long-term investment in cryptocurrencies. I think that a lot of people are getting into cryptocurrency for the first time this year, and that's happened many times before. People are sitting down trying to think about these projects that have great expectations and promises of returns in the future. Uh, they want to get something at less than a penny, and hopefully it becomes Bitcoin size and they 1,000x their money because they've done the research on these cases and, oh, they've got a great use case and a great team and all that BS. I've seen it before time and time again. When I talk about the actual use cases that I've seen and are working in the cryptocurrency space, and I'm not advocating for any of these, you have Bitcoin and Litecoin for their first mover advantage. You've got Ethereum for its smart contracts. All of the DeFi is running on Ethereum. The NFTs are in some way running on Ethereum. There's a lot of use cases. And there's no reason or excuse me, that's the reason I would say, if I had to put a reason on it, why Ethereum is outperforming. And then the final use case, which I've said for a long time, is Monero, because it adheres to the original promises of cryptocurrency, which is being a truly decentralized and truly anonymous cryptocurrency. Now, there's other coins, of course, are going to claim to be that, but Monero, it's stuck around. And while it hasn't really outperformed, you know, some of the big names, I mean, it's still gone up a good bit. So uh, not soliciting to buy or sell, but there's only a few things that I think that you need to be concentrating on when you're looking for long term investments in cryptocurrency. And it's not trying to get on, on the smallest little cryptocurrency that you can, that's going to give you immense returns. Really think about it like an investment. What are the use cases? What are the actual proven use cases? And who is already a believer in these things. So take this as a little bit of a gem to think about when you're considering your long-term crypto investment portfolio. Trade wisely. We'll see you in the next video.